If we've learned anything from the past two years, it is that a strong online marketing strategy is key to keeping your business successful. And it's actually just as important if you're starting a brand new business from scratch. So in this video, I'm gonna share what's working right now to market your business like a pro so that you can see those real results in 2022 and beyond. So I've honestly never seen a year with more changes to how we need to get the word out about our businesses. Of course, we're still dealing with the pandemic and we had another huge shakeup in 2021 with Apple's privacy update, which basically made running profitable Facebook and Instagram ads much more difficult. But there are many things that do still work. In fact, some of the tactics that I'm gonna to share today are true game changers and actually work better than some things we used to see back when things were much more normal. So let's just get right into it. First, we have to talk about Facebook and Instagram ads, what's going on with them right now, and how you can beat that update and come out successful when most other businesses are completely failing at them right now. So in case you don't really know about the privacy update, I'm just gonna give you the really short version. Um, so basically, Facebook used to be able to track what pretty much all their users did online, thanks to so many website owners right installing that Facebook pixel on their website. So, you know, whether you think that's good or not, not gonna get into that today, um, but it did give Facebook all the raw data they needed to be able to just serve your ads to the people that they knew would be most likely to wanna to take you up on your offers. And the other thing that Facebook could do was see who clicked through your ad and who actually bought, you know, on your website. They bought your product or scheduled an appointment or opted into your email list. Um, and knowing who actually took action helped them optimize who they were gonna show your ads to in the future so that you could just see better and better performance over time. But now Apple has put a stop to all that tracking, at least for whatever uh, browsing happens on iPhones. So now Facebook is much more blind to what's going on off of Facebook, making it harder for them to know who to show your ads to. With me so far? <laughs> okay, I know that was a lot, but um, we know that they can't necessarily see what happens outside of Facebook anymore, but guess what they still can see? Everything that happens on Facebook or on Instagram. So in 2022, we just need to be smarter and play into that change and do more on Facebook. And I do have a few very specific tactics here. So first of all, we're seeing absolutely amazing results right now with Facebook lead ads. Um, back before all this happened, if you wanted to run an ad for your lead magnet so you could build your email list or you know get someone into a free consultation, you would usually run a typical conversion ad. So people would see your ad, some of them would click on it, and they'd be taken to your website where they could you know opt in for it. And as I said, Facebook would see that conversion and it helped them optimize who was gonna see the ad after that. But without being able to see and record that conversion on your website, we need to take a different tactic now and get that same sign up on Facebook itself. So a lead ad looks just like any conversion ad at first, right? And then when somebody clicks on it, the old, here's where it changes, right? They're not taken to your website but a form opens up instead right on Facebook, and that form is usually pre-filled out with whatever info that you wanted to ask for. All they have to do is confirm and click submit, and Facebook can record that conversion, meaning they can still keep optimized your targeting and you've accomplished the exact same goal. And since this all happens right on Facebook, you have the added benefit of typically cheaper ad costs because you aren't taking people away from the platform, which Facebook wants you to keep them there. Facebook likes people uh, to stay as long as possible, so they're gonna charge you more if you take people somewhere else. So now let's talk about retargeting warm audiences with Facebook ads, right? It's always smart to show your ads to people who already know a little bit about you and your business. So these are warm audiences and they're almost always gonna be worth more to you as a business than someone who's never heard of you because they're that much more likely to take action. And you should absolutely still be retargeting your website traffic, um, people who've been to your homepage or sales pages or even your blog, but we know that fewer of those people are being recorded by Facebook now, so we need to supplement that 
um, that retargeting with warm audiences you build right on Facebook. And my two favorite ways of doing this are retargeting video views, as well as anyone who engages with your business on Facebook. So let's talk about the video views first, right? An incredibly powerful thing you can do is create a video or two that gives actual value, right? I'm talking about giving a quick tip or a piece of advice, or even inspiring people just to see what's possible. And of course, this should have a lot of overlap with what you offer and actually charge for. So if you're a vet office, you could share your top three picks for healthy dog food, for instance. Um, then you just create a custom audience of anyone who watches more than you know three seconds or 10 seconds of that video. And the other kind of audience you can retarget is anybody who engages with your account, with your Facebook or Instagram profile in any way. So you'd basically just run an ad or two um, for a few bucks a day that again gives value. So this can be video, it can be image-based, whatever you think would resonate best. And you'd simply run that as an engagement ad. So this should spur on a lot of comments, likes and shares. And this is really smart for a couple of reasons. First of all, you get to retarget all of those engagers with more ads. Secondly, Facebook does tend to reward accounts that have lots of engagement and data to work with. And when I say reward, what I really mean is lower ad costs for all of your more expensive conversion focused ads. So I highly encourage you to start running some really basic engagement ads as soon as possible so that when you're ready to run those ads meant to actually sell something, your ad accounts can have lots of action and engagement on it, helping every ad that you run after that be much more successful and profitable. Okay, so now let's move into our next marketing tip. So video is now non-negotiable, right? There's probably no better indicator of this than the head of Instagram actually came right out and said, they are no longer a photo sharing app. They're going all in on video, and by that I really mean on Reels. Essentially, they're trying to beat TikTok at their own game. So I've been talking about video as a trend for probably five years now, but we are now reaching a tipping point, I guess, where video is no longer just a trend. It's not a nice to have. It is really now just the, the baseline to even compete online these days. And take it from me, there is no better way to make people notice you and your brand than through video content. So if making longer form YouTube videos seems like too tall an order, you don't wanna do that, Reels on Instagram is a really easy way to get started and to get some really viral attention right now. So by creating really short, and by short I mean like 15 to 30 seconds short, value packed videos, you're gonna be warming up audiences on hyperdrive. So Instagram does make it super easy to just open the app, record yourself, edit it, Add in some music if you want, and all the other you know bells and whistles that you may need. But to be honest, you don't need all that much. You know, do not worry about the dancing and pointing, unless you really want to, of course. And definitely don't worry about keeping up with all those ever-changing TikTok trends, right? When it comes to video content that builds trust and authority and sells at the end of the day. It's 100% okay to just deliver your message to the camera like this. I mean, you, you still should have good energy and delivery, but as long as you have that and you dole out some really good tips or advice or inspiration, you're good to go. That's all you need. And if you're doing this organically, meaning you know, you're not wanting to pay for your visibility and you just want the algorithm to pick you up naturally, there are a few things that you need to keep in mind. First of all, make good use of your hashtags. Now I recommend maxing out all 30 hashtags that they let you use, um, and you wanna go for a good healthy mix of all levels of competition. So some are gonna be high competition, some medium and some low. Next, uh, consistency, right? And the sheer quantity here are actually pretty key. Ideally, you wanna post at least four reels a week, seven is better, um, and I know that can be a really tall order, but it's the trade-off here. If you wanna grow, you're gonna pay for it one way or another. In this case, you'll be paying with your time. And if you'd rather just pay money to get results, you're in luck because Instagram recently rolled out the Reels ad placement letting you show up as an ad that looks just like any other Reel apart from this 
fairly subtle sponsored designation at the bottom. So this would give you the freedom to create way less reels and still get in front of lots of your target audience who would be your perfect customers. And just like with Facebook ads we talked about earlier, you can later retarget all of those people who watch your reels with more ads that are designed to actually convert them into a customer. And while we're on video, let's go even further and let's talk about my next marketing trend for 2022, which is live streaming. So as powerful as video is for your business, there's still always going to be a bit of a barrier between you and your audience when it's pre-recorded. But when you live stream, they feel like they're part of it. Right? You get to engage and interact with them and talk directly to them, which is incredibly powerful when it comes to building up rapport and trust. I mean, honestly, literally just shouting out someone's name in real time is going to make them feel much more of a personal connection to you and your business than just passively watching several of your recorded videos back to back. Not to mention, people are usually going to watch a live video for four times as long as a pre-recorded one and engage with it five times as much. So when we talk about this from a marketing perspective, this is kind of the ultimate shortcut to getting lots of attention for your business. And elephant in the room time, you may be really scared to go live. I know I was the first time I did it. And honestly, you know, I was a little nervous every time I hit that button after that, but it did get easier. And I started to look forward to that interaction between me and my audience. And a true silver lining to the live aspect of video is there's pretty much zero expectation of high production value, meaning you can get away with recording it on your phone without a great mic and with it being completely off the cuff, um, you know, just interacting with your audience, answering their questions. And because it's live, there's no post-production or editing, right? It, you literally just do it in real time and you have the freedom to do that and then just move on with your day after. As opposed to, you know, this video, which is gonna require about 10 hours of post-production and editing and all that kind of stuff. So live definitely shortcuts that. And pretty much every social platform just has live video built in as a feature now. So just come up with a topic you wanna talk to your customers about, jot down some notes, drink a coffee to get some good energy going, and press live. So that covers video, but now I wanna look at the flip side, which is on-demand audio. So if you walk around, you may notice just about everybody has their earbuds in pretty much all the time. And if you follow some of my advice here, those little white pieces of plastic could be working really hard delivering your message. Um, and I've got an excellent tip here for you if you have a business that caters to a you know national or even international audience. And then another one that's especially great for you local businesses out there. So if you aren't tied to a location where you serve your customers, a really excellent way of getting your word out is through a podcast. So podcasts are growing more and more every single year. So we have not even come close to seeing their full potential yet. But even though they do still have a lot of growing to do, more Americans listen to podcasts every week than have Netflix accounts. Like, that blew my mind when I heard that stat. Now to be fair, that might just be because everyone's stealing their mom's Netflix password, but still. Podcasts are big, and you've got several ways you can take advantage of this. So the first way, the, you know, all-in way, would be to start your own podcast and start slowly building an audience. Now, as long as you can come up with an overall topic for your show that has some really good overlap with what you charge for, and you don't mind putting in the time to see results, this is probably the best long-term play there is. You control the show, you control what you advertise or promote on each episode, and they will get to know you more and more every single week. Because next to video, having a podcast is my second favorite content marketing strategy right now. It just lets you go way more long form than video since people are generally doing other things while they're listening. And as a result of that, people can probably get to feel like they know you even better than they could with video. But if starting your own podcast isn't really something you can commit to, that's fine. You can borrow other people's already established audiences by either going on other podcasts as an expert guest, or you can simply pay to sponsor an episode or a series of episodes. You know, Casper and Squarespace can't sponsor every podcast, even though it seems like they, they do, um, which leaves lots of opportunity for you. So just do your research here and find some shows that your ideal customers are probably listening to, and then reach out to the hosts, and then either you know pitch yourself as a guest or ask them what it takes to be a sponsor. Just remember, if you're pitching yourself as an expert to come on the show, 
Lead with what you can bring to the show and their audience, not just leading with what your goal is for coming on. So I used to have a podcast. I recently wrapped it up, but I would get a crazy amount of pitches every day. And most were just basically really long brags about the person's accomplishments. And they never actually came around to say what they would come on and talk to my audience about that would help them. And I ignored every single one of those, to be honest. So lead with that value and you're gonna get a much better response rate. But what about for you local businesses? For you guys, I'm absolutely in love with Spotify ads. The process is super easy. First, all you wanna do is just figure out a specific offer that you wanna advertise, that's important. Um, Then script out a 30 second ad read that clearly states the offer, the main benefit of your offer, and the call to action, which in most cases is gonna be to tap the screen to get the offer um, over on your website. And now you have a choice. You can record it yourself or for no extra cost, their voiceover artists are gonna read the ad, they can add in some background music, and then you can specify, here's where it gets good, the geographic area that your ad can be heard in. So if you're a dentist in Omaha, you just specify the Omaha area or even specific zip codes And then anyone who's listening to Spotify, you know, the free version of Spotify within that area will be able to hear your ad. It'll be served up to them. Now, this does tend to work best for local businesses with a fairly wide appeal because targeting options on Spotify are still pretty basic. So right now you can target on, you know, as we said, location, age ranges, gender, and the most basic of interest, which I honestly don't think or worked out enough yet to be useful. But the coolest part of this is you pay usually about one to two cents per listen, which is just an incredible deal in the digital marketing world. But what if you have the kind of business that people are actually searching for? In your case, I highly recommend optimizing your website for Google search traffic. And the way you do that has actually changed quite a bit over the past few years. SEO or search engine optimization has gotten a lot smarter So let's optimize for smart search. So what SEO used to be all about was just, you know, jamming your keywords as many times into the text on your website as you could. And when Google was less intelligent, that worked because it was kind of all they had to go on. But now they understand overall topics and they know what kind of content, what kind of words they should be seeing on a good quality website on that topic. So let's just say you're a, a repair shop for gaming consoles. So rather than just cramming the phrase gaming console repair into your homepage 30 or 40 times, Google would actually expect that page to mention phrases like video game repair or PlayStation, PS4, these kinds of, you know, phrases and keywords that would suggest that you're covering your topic fully and completely. And the other piece to smart search is optimizing for user signals because Guess what? Google does see how long people are sticking around on your site, how far down the page they're scrolling, and if they end up leaving your site and then continuing their their search somewhere else. So these are all signals that your users, you know, aka potential customers, send to Google just through their natural actions and reactions to your site's content. So the best thing you can do to be found by more customers is to give the ones you already have the best possible experience, right? Things like writing on your website for people rather than search engines, letting them know the benefits of working with you, answering their questions proactively, busting through their objections in real time, right? All these things, and to circle back on a topic we covered earlier, adding things like video can really help you do all that, at the same time increasing the amount of time people spend on your site. And there are a ton of other smart things you can do on your website that are gonna help you keep your visitors happy, encourage more of them to convert into paying customers, and send all those positive signals right back to Google so they can reward you with even more traffic. So just click right here to join my free masterclass where I'm gonna show you all my website secrets you can put to good use in just a few days. You're not gonna find this stuff anywhere else, so just click right here and I'll send you your copy of the training right away.